On this episode, we're going to be talking about Santo Fino tequila with the Red Rocker himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Sammy Hagar, right here on the Tequila Hombre, coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre, where today we're going to be talking tequila with the owner of the brand Santo Fino Tequila. I've always said this was my favorite, one of my favorite um, ce celebrity tequilas. And today we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, the Red Rocker, Sammy Hagar. I got a chance to sit down and interview him, and he is just uh, as passionate about tequila, I think, as I am and has lots of great information and stuff he's going to share. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the interview. No. All right. Well, first of all, well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to, to talk to me today. Um, I'm really grateful. I know you're a busy person, so I, I do appreciate this. Um, the first thing I want to start off with, though, is um, I was coming back from Dallas, Texas uh, the other day, and I landed in the Ontario airport, and all of a sudden I hear a voice coming over the loudspeaker that says... This is Sammy Hagar, and I grew up in the Inland Empire, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't know that." So that was kind of cool to hear that hear that com that commercial come over the loudspeaker at Ontario Airport. I've never heard it myself because you know I'm I I haven't traveled through there for quite a while. But yeah, I grew up in the Inland Empire uh, down there, and back in those days, the the tequila I was drinking back then, <laughs> I don't even think. I have it on the market anymore, you know. That, <laughs> honestly, the first time I ever drank tequila, it had a worm in it, and and, and I'm, I'm quite sure it was Cuevo Gold in a small, you know, half pint or something, and it had a friggin' worm in it. If you can believe that, I mean, that's wow. How far we've come? We've come a long way. We certainly have. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start out and and, and learn a little bit about your your tequila journey. I know you were like the first celebrity really to create a brand. Uh, so what like motivated you to say, hey, I want to go out and create a tequila brand? Um, to be honest, it was uh, so organic. I didn't think in my head that I was even creating anything. Uh, it's just that I went to, um, I built the Cabo Wabo and I, I went down to Jalisco. Uh, to, well, I went to Guadalajara to pick out furniture for the Cabo Wabo and um, the cantina. I just wanted a place to play and stuff and have, you know, have tequila and, you know, make it fun, margaritas. You know, everyone knows a margarita is the greatest mixed cocktail on the planet. You know, there's there's bad ones, but it's pretty hard to make a bad margarita. <laughs> you know, salt, lime, you know, uh, sweet, uh, some sweetness and tequila and, uh, and and you got really nice combination. But uh, <clears throat> so I went down and my friend said we were staying in, in Guadalajara for a few days and my friend said my Mexican a partner at that time, Jorge Vianney, who still runs the Cabo while he's still my partner. Let's go to Jalisco. Let's go to the town of Tequila. And I said, oh, sure, let's go. And uh, when I got there, the tequila we were drinking there was like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> this is not the tequila I knew about. And um, so it just changed my life and my world. I said, let's let's get one of these guys to make tequila for the Cabo Wabo, you know. And, and he said, yeah, OK, I got some friends down here. And he just knew some guy, and the guy just said, yeah, I can find a distillery. Come on back down. So we came back down uh, after we had bought all the furniture and had it shipped to Mexico. Went back down and, and uh, went on a tour, like a wine tour, like you would do in France or what you do in, in Napa. Mm -hmm. And we tasted all these tequilas from these. Um, we went to the farmers. And so this the Rivera family, who made Cabo Wabo and, and El Vijito uh, and we went to all these different places and, and I just, we talked to the farmers who had their own personal stuff. We didn't go to Cuevo, we didn't go to Sousa, you know, which about the only two in, in, in those times, there was more, but there, Don Julio was, was down there then, but he hadn't come to America yet. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I just said, wow, these farmers, they say, yeah, we, we make for our family every year. We pick the best of the you know, these guys that talk to my friend telling them, how, you know, they're laughing about how they pick the biggest, best agaves and they sell the other stuff to the other guys. And so I said, well, you guys make me some tequila? He said, yeah, you know, and it was El Vijito at that time who makes Santo now today. Mm -hmm. uh, his father, uh, Juan Eduardo's father. 
But anyway, then he got in trouble, and we ended up changing to the Maravalli, uh people uh, for Cabo Wabo at that time. But my point is, is that, yeah, we were in, involved with the farmers. And there you go. And that's that, that's that's the stuff. Yeah, that's and, the good stuff. <laughs> and these farmers knew how to make the best tequila, and it, you know, and, and that that's how I got into the super fine stuff. When I start going back and drinking more commercial tequilas, like I still today, I'm I'm shocked at at how you know bad some tequila is. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but a lot of people don't make good tequila, and I'm I'm into making the best tequila you can possibly make, and it's pretty simple if you just don't cut all them corners and you find the right and you got the good agave and the good water and yep. somebody knows what they're doing good barrels if you're going to age it you know I, I don't care about the aging process until i know the blanco is is perfect once i get that blanco right trim the agave just right the, the amount of times you cook it and the way you press it and just all the little every step has got to be done not cutting corners and uh and you come out with a good blanco you don't even have to put in wood, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. It, I love good a good blanco. It's. Yeah. Uh, it, you can't hide any any mistakes uh, in a in a good blanco. It's everything shows itself. So. Yeah. Every time <clears throat> someone says, "Hey, try my tequila," you know, I, I run into people all the time. Oh, I make tequila too. Or, or going to a bar and, and a bartender says, "Oh man, have you tried this and that?" And I just say, "Give me the blanco." I'm not interested in your añejo. <laughs> I'm interested in your blanco, and then I'll tell you if it's if I think it's good or not. You so Cabo Wabo greenness if it's underripe agave. You can taste the, yeah. the if it's you know rotten if they throw bad things in there. You know rotten roots and everything that we cut off. You know if you just throw everything in there, you can taste it. You can smell it in there. You know you can smell anything that's kind of rotten or anything that's uh, yeah not right. Yeah, the panka, when they put extra panka and stuff in there, you definitely can taste it. So, um, I, one of the things that I, I wanted to ask you is, I know you know you did Cabo Wabo, and it was a, it was a really good brand. I actually got to be able to eat lunch. We have a timeshare in Cabo, and so we uh, we stay at the um, Pueblo Benito uh, Blanco and Rosé, and it's walking oh, yeah. distance to your cantina. So we always used to walk over to your cantina and eat lunch and have some some Cabo Wabo back in when when Cabo Wabo was good. Uh, and so when you dis decided to sell it, um, did you have any regrets now? Or did you wish you would have kept it? And since we had this huge tequila boom now where things are just taking off like crazy? You know, there was a time when I was sorry I sold it because it's a very political game, uh, the distribution thing between, you know, the... the these guys and these guys and these guys and I was with Young's Market and R and D C, you know, but before they were merging. But I would still was with that family, and um, and then when I sold it to um, Campari, they were with Southern, and you know Southern's the big the big boys and the, the and but getting that transfer from the Southern guys who used to tell people ah Cabo Wall with that rock star he don't know what he's doing you know and and we were out there fighting you know the big boy and now all of a sudden the big boys got there going oops we can't talk about Cabo Wall with that way <laughs> they're pushing hey, their right? patron right they have it so uh, it was a weird transition you know we lost a lot of momentum and the only th at that time I saw you know my brand disappearing off shelves and stuff and I wasn't allowed to make a new tequila yet that's when I first started making Sammy's Beach Bar Rum in Hawaii um, so I, I, I loved the business so much I wanted to get back into it so I started making rum which was not a, a, a problem with um, um, you know competition so right. but the long story short I sat there and watched Cabo Wobble kind of go down the drain uh, to about half we were at 167,000 cases when I sold it and would drop down to about 80 I thought I called up Luca uh, Garavoglia and asked if I could buy the brand back you know because I said man you know I, I, I can't stand seeing my child you know yeah. getting bad grades <laughs> and but uh, he said no no Sammy we don't we, we buy brands we don't sell you know what something like that but it was all very I, I love Campari great great people so uh, yeah I felt I really felt man I shouldn't have sold it I was in I was on a winning streak man we were growing 20 30 percent every year you know uh, and and I you know my my Blue bottle, which I loved the whole the whole thing. I thought I thought we were just 
that's why we got bought. When I say we, that's why someone came and bought that brand for me. And and I sold it because I, they gave me such a great multiple at that time. Uh, I couldn't resist. I'm going, wait a minute. This this is life changing stuff here. You know, like I don't ever have to think about working again if I didn't want to. But then, of course, that was another stupid decision I made because I'll, I'll work the rest of my life because I love it. <laughs> I only do what I love to do. And I'm, I'm a lucky guy to be able to go out and play music and to be able to make booze and have fan base and buy it. You know, I'm a maniac about it, quality, about it. Everything's got to be the best it can be. If I, if I still think, I can sing as good as other singers. I'm gonna go sing. You know what I mean? I'm gonna jump up on stage and say, oh yeah, watch me, you know? But if I couldn't sing anymore, I'm not gonna do that. And that's the kind of guy I am. And it's like, if I think I can make better tequila than everyone else, I'm gonna make tequila. And and that's why I don't make wine. Everybody says, you know, you're a wine guy. I have a huge wine collection for since the 70s. And uh, I've been collecting wine. And so I've got an incredible seller. And people say, why don't you make wine? You know so much about it. I say, because I can't, make a better wine than a Chevrolet Blanc or a Romani Conte or, you know, my favorite Vegas Cecilia's. Man, I say, man, I, those people scare me to death. You know, I, I would never make an inferior product and try to sell it to my people. So that's that's how I get in any business. I say I can compete. And uh, tequila is really my favorite spirit. That's awesome. It's mine too. <laughs> And then, so you decided to, after your non-compete was over, you decided to, to start a Santo brand, right? And so and you went back and with Juan Nunez, who's, who's amazing. I mean, they do a great job there at El Vijito. And so what, what kind of things did you want to do with this brand that were maybe different than what you did with Cabo Wabo? Well, I knew more. See, I thought I was going to be way ahead of the game when I started over again. I thought, oh boy, I know everything now. When, when in Cabo Wabo, when we made Cabo Uno, uh, I asked the, the distiller back then it, it, at, at Miravalle. We had we had left El Vejito because you know they, they got in trouble and we couldn't they couldn't make stuff. Uh, the government confiscated him, but he got out of trouble. He's back. He, he's he's the best tequila maker in the world. <laughs> anyway, but so I said I said to the, the guy at Miravalle, how can I make the best tequila in the world? He goes, well. You can trim the agave type, you know? And so I said, let's do that. And he goes, it's expensive. You lose about 30% of the of the, uh, Yield. the product. So you know, I said, I wanna make I wanna make the best friggin' tequila in the world. And we're gonna put it in new barrels and we're gonna leave it for as long as possible until we taste it every six months. And that was Cabo Uno. And it was $235 a bottle and I made more on a frickin' bottle of, of, of $37 Blanco <laughs> in the blue bottle than I did on that one. But, uh, so I learned that. And, and the new barrels was one thing, if you're gonna age it, you know, using once used barrels and don't use them too many times. Right. Because they start getting musty and moldy and you gotta burn them too much and then pretty soon you're losing the wood, you're not getting it, and blah, blah, blah. Right. So it gets bitter. Uh, so I, I thought, I want to trim the agaves closer. So with Santo right right out of the box, I told uh, you know Juan. I said, "Come on, let's let's make the best tequila in the world." And he goes, hey, he goes, "I only know how to make the best tequila. I don't know how to do it the other way." He's an arrogant bastard. You know? I love that, but <laughs> some people get rubbed wrong with. But he goes, "No, I only know how to make the best tequila in the world." So you know the fact of cooking it twice, that you know cooking it and letting it rest, and then cooking it again. That is so brilliant. It just brings the caramelization and the the things out of the agave that just makes it nice and sweet. And they're going to add nothing to it, you know. And uh, so we that's what I wanted to do with Santo. And, okay. But then I, I, I wanted to make mezcal first because it was so hot. And I was getting turned on to it. So then I went down to, I got to tell this story real quick. So then I went down to Oaxaca and spent a week there with uh, a friend of mine that's just an expert. And I, the more I drank mezcal, the more I started disliking it because it just builds up on you, you know. And and I like a clean beverage, um, so I decided well, I can't make mezcal. It's, I just don't. I can't drink it, you know. And the more more expensive it was, the more special it was, the worse it was getting for me. <laughs> so I thought uh, to my partner at that time, I um, I had a a guy th that was helping us with cobble wobble a lot. Um, Julio um, Bermejo? Oh, es Escondón. Oh, Julio Escondón. Okay. Not Julio Bermejo. 
he he was he's he was an expert like you. He he's a different kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he was my friend as well. But no, Julio uh, Escondón, I think, and him and his son. He was on the board of directors in in Jalisco and uh, with for tequila and all this stuff. I said, "Can we make a hybrid? Can we mix it?" And he goes, "Oh no 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 no, you know you can't do that." And I'm going, "Well, why not?" He said, "Well, I don't know. Let's see." So he, I said, "Bring me some mezcals." You know, not the heaviest, hardest core stuff. I said, you know, give me some good, nice, uh, you know, uh, mezcal. And uh, and then we're going to use El Vajito. So we had the Blanco and we started blending it. And it took a year. We couldn't figure out how to do it. It just did not work. You put it in a shaker, you fucking do all this stuff. <laughs> 60, 40. Okay, let's try 35, 65. You know, try all these different. It didn't work no matter what you did. And Juan Eduardo said, he came up with a secret and he just said one day he went this is not tequila this is not mezcal he goes this is mezquila because i came up with the name i thought once i have this name this name is too good and he did something he blended it again he aerated it he redistilled it you know his little secret and so i made mezquila first and i thought this is the coolest thing ever the government would not let me trademark it because it's they know there's no such thing i said well it is you taste it there is such a thing and then guy fietti got involved and said no we're making blanco we're making reposado we're making and yeah you know, he's he makes me sound like a <laughs> like a, some lazy guy just sitting around on the couch eating potato chips you know guy he, he's fired up so we we got in the full-blown tequila business but originally i just wanted to make mezquila and uh, i thought i'm gonna just invent a new category and when I look on lists, I go into restaurants and bars and I see or we're on a list. They put mezquila on the mezcal list <laughs> where I wish it had its own category, but um, no one's ever really made it. So, yeah, I mean, so how did you, make, well, we're the, we're the only one making it. Santa. How did you come about bringing? Yeah, I, I, I need to try it. So I'm waiting for they're sending me uh, some bottles and I, I haven't tried it yet. I have had the Blanco uh, in the white bottle, you know, in the in the repo. Um, which I still have here from the old old bottle. I understand the bottles are new. Um, yeah. So, um, what made you want to to bring Guy Fieri in? That's um... well, he's always been a friend. He's always been a fan. He won a contest with Cabo Wabo in Northern California. I was doing some local shows, and I said, you know, the the winner of the bar. We had a promo promo with the sales team. The winner of the restaurant or bar that sells the most Cabo Wabo tequila in the next uh, month gets to come to the concert. I send a limo and you come and I get a signed guitar and you get to sit, you know, sit backstage with me and have dinner after the show. Like I always eat after a show mm -hmm. and I drink tequila <laughs> and fine wines or whatever we do. And uh, Guy Fieri won because he put Cabo Wabo, a $45 bottle of tequila in his well at at Johnny Garnets. Now that's how you're gonna win <laughs> with a with a high end, you know, premium tequila. You don't put it in the well. Most yeah. people. nowadays people do it, but <clears throat> back then it was unheard of. You know, you have you have a nine dollar liter, <laughs> a nine dollar liter. Keep your pouring costs down. <laughs> so he won. So he walks in backstage, and and I look at him. I go, oh, this dude's got my flip flops on. He's got my shorts on. He's got my sunglasses. He's got the blonde hair all spiked up. You know. And I said, this is my kind of guy. We hit it off like you would never believe. And he wasn't famous yet. He just had that one little restaurant. Yeah. So after the show, when I'm on stage, he has his chef go back and make a bunch of sushi. And he, he had it. He served it to me. I walked off stage. He's got the guitar he won. And he's got sushi on there. And he goes, <laughs> let's eat. I thought, we've been friends ever since. Needless to say, come on nice. now. Yeah. So, uh, when I sold the tequila, he calls me up and says, dude, did I just read what I think I read? And I said, yeah, you might have. <laughs> you know? And he goes, if you ever do that again, you, you know, blah, bleep, 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 blah, 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 you know, um, I'm your fucking partner. You got it? And I said, <laughs> oh, shit, absolutely. I said, but I can't do anything for a long time. But we, we were friends. He's coming to shows all the time. He was always going to my birthday bash and cooking for me backstage and, you know, and we, we, we dear friends. And uh, so I forgot about him, though, when I started with the mezquila, I start, Adam Levine came to me and was the guy that said, hey, I want to make tequila. Yeah. Can you help me out? And I said, sure, let's, you know, I'll partner up with you. My, my contract's over, you know. So I started with him and he, he had other issues that he couldn't get involved. So 
guy comes in and bought Adam out, basically, and uh, he calls me up and said, dude, I thought I said, I said, oh, yeah, 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 no, it's all good. You know, Adam's not working out, he can't do it for all these reasons. So, he, you know, he, he came in. It was, we never even signed a deal. We, we didn't even shake hands. We did it on the phone. It's like, fuck yeah, of course, you know. And <laughs> put your lawyer in touch with my lawyer, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do this thing. And uh, he's the best thing ever happened to the brand because he is so passionate and so energetic, and he has the exact love of we want to make the best tequila in the world. You know, he's not hammering me, hey, man, we should be more commercial, man. Maybe if we did this and did that, we could sell more tequila. He ain't doing that. He's like me. We're fighting with everybody else about it, saying, no, 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 we ain't doing that. No, we're not going to, you know, go with the trend of additives in tequila and, and, and you know, flavors and stuff to make it taste more like coconut and and have a Blanco that tastes like it's been in wood for 10 years. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. You know, I'm not interested. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the most, my favorite story recently in the last six months of my life, my favorite tequila story is one of the really big tequilas out, you know, right now that everybody's drinking and, and raving about. And it's not raving about, but they're drinking it because they don't know it any better, a lot of people. And I go to a bartender and I saw it there and it had a Patron and, and a, he only had about three tequilas. And I said, uh, hey, give me a shot of that Blanco right there. And the bartender, he knew who I was. And, and he looked at me and said, are you sure? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said yeah, yeah, no, really, I haven't had it in a long time. I want to see how it's tasted these days. You know, they got pretty big out there. And he goes, I'm going to put an ice cube in it, OK? And I said, sure, OK. He's, <laughs> so he puts the ice cube in it, and I said, Cheers, and I was with Michael Anthony, and he had a shot of Patron, which is good tequila. Yeah. And, we, and I smell it, and I go, whoa. I took a drink, and I said, hey, I asked for a shot of tequila, not a mixed drink. Fucking bartender almost fell off on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the way I feel about it, but I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I just can't do it. Tequila's gotten so big because there's so many people out there that really don't know what real tequila tastes like. And a lot of them, if they tasted it, would go, oh my God, oh, that's, oh, I can't drink that, you know, it's, it's, oh, give me the shivers, you know. It's like, yeah, that's yes, tequila, man. It's like, it's, you know, you, you don't need to distill it 10 times. And it's, you know, for me, it's a double distilled, twice cut, double distilled, tight cut agave, boom, that's tequila, you know, and it, and it goes with a little salt first. You know? I always like to put salt in my mouth, just the first drink, only because you know, if you've been chewing peppermint gum or something, you know, or you've been eating a piece of cheesecake. Or something, you set the palate. Yeah. It tastes as good as if you have a nice salty potato chip or something in your mouth. And uh, and after that, you know, I, I just go straight up. But yeah, so many people uh, really. I remember when I first got involved with, with wine, I would drink, you know, these sweet Rieslings and and wines that were sweet you know and easy to drink i thought oh this is pretty good and then i elevate to a good riesling and say oh this is a lot drier i kind of like that sweet one better and then all of a sudden your palate starts changing pretty soon you're not liking these big fat fruity wines you're going with more like a, a bordeaux and things that are a little more a lot more depth and not these big fruit bombs and that's the way tequila drinkers are right now you know they a lot of people are jumping in it because it's so hip and cool i want a shot of tequila i want tequila and they want something that goes down easy, all glistened up, and got a little sugar in it, a little syrupy, and and uh, and they're going, ah, this is great, you know. I'm getting high on tequila, and, you know. And but eventually, those people are going to move into real tequila, yeah. which is stuff that ain't fucked with. You we know, call that tequila. pancake syrup here. <laughs> yeah, no additives, no flavors, <laughs> none of that in there. It's just a shame because a lot of those brands are using up a lot of the agave, and you know, and and poor Juan, he's got to search around for decent five, six-year-olds at least now. But back in the old days, you wouldn't touch anything under seven or eight years old. You know, right? Uh, yeah. But you know, we're having to scratch around a little bit, and and uh, it, it, and it's gotten so expensive. It's too bad. But I have a feeling a lot of those people are going to drop out, and a lot of those bad tequilas are going to drop out, and people are going to stop. You know, they're going to get hip, and and the, the category might shrink a little bit. But that's fine with me. I don't want to be the biggest spirits brand in the world guy and i always say no we just want to be the best you know yeah. we want to be competing with the top guys out there so that's part of what i do is educate people on what they're drinking and and it, it get them to 
try the the unadulterated unadditive stuff so um to, to coin a phrase or steal a phrase from uh, guy fieri so they can visit flavor town really and and try uh some of what really good tequila tastes like and i've got the a lot of people that i've transitioned over from the sweet stuff to the natural um stuff and so that's one of the reasons why whenever anybody asks me they always say hey, hombre um you know what do you think about the additive tequilas or the celebrities tequilas is there anyone that you would would drink yourself and i said there only there's only one uh, celebrity tequila right now that i would drink and i go that's the, the santo santo fino i go that's because it's it's a beautiful tequila there's no additives and it's very good sipper and if you want to make cocktails with it it's really good with that too so i've always uh, yeah thank you um, <coughs> that's you don't know what that does you should see my legs you probably can't see on a film, but my arms, I have goosebumps. You see that? My <laughs> yeah. fur is up from you saying that because that's how passionate Guy and I are about it. That's the way I feel about it. It's like, uh, I don't want to put anybody else down, but man, it, it's like if you want to drink tequila, it's such a special spirit. It is so special and unique from any other spirit. And the pure, the more pure it is, I'm telling you, the better your experience is going to be. And if and I'm not joking, I'm talking about the buzz. You know, we drink to get high. We get high. We want to have a good time. Tequila is the best for that. And the more pure it is, the better your high is going to be, and the and the better your come down is going to be. And I, I'm giving you education. I'm educated in this in this category of of getting high and throwing parties and playing at the Cabo Wabo and being on stage. You drink the pure stuff, and you don't you don't get hurt. I mean, you can overdo anything, but you drink the same amount, seven or eight shots throughout the night of one tequila and a pure one, brother, you can testify. The next day, you're going to be fine, and that other guy's going to be going, damn, I can't drink tequila anymore. Uh, that's why all these people in, in, in college in the old days when I was growing up, would, you know, you, those college guys that w we were drinking that rot gut tequila and having... <laughs> You know, spending half the night around the toilet, you know, <laughs> with the spins, uh, one foot on the ground. <clears throat> yeah. And we'd say, we came to a point in our life, no, I can't drink tequila anymore. No, I, that's it. Well, that's because you were drinking that some wrong stuff. You know, nowadays you got real tequila. It ain't like that. And it, it's just such a special spirit. It just deserves uh, special treatment. And, and a it's a ritual. That old ritual, a little bit of salt, boom, and a bite of lime or orange or lemon, a citrus. Um, that's real. It works. It tastes wonderful. And you don't have to do that anymore with these super fine tequilas, but uh, a lot of times you, you know, took a bite of a lime and a big old lick of salt to kill the taste of the tequila. But That's, once you get <coughs> really good tequila, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong, I'm, a, I'm an agave nut. <laughs> I am too. Guy and I are the Agave <laughs> brothers. But like. I love that. Yeah, and I always sip all my tequila neat, you know, out of a out of a proper agave glass, you know. So yeah, um, that, that little round thing and then the little lip on it, it really does bring out everything you want from it. You get, you get it does better nose. You know, if you got too big of a you know brandy type sniffer type thing, you get too much alcohol. For me, that way, this thing controls the alcohol and and the the agave, and that's yeah. Yeah, I love the glass. I, uh, yeah, I drink it out of little champagne flutes, too, uh, once in a while. You know, if I have an Añejo, I like to go in about halfway of a champagne. There you go. There's the <laughs> I've got all the proper glassware. <laughs> All right, so um, I know you guys changed the look of Santa. Was there a reason behind going with the clear bottles versus the, the bottles like this, the blue bottles and yeah, the white bottles? Yeah, we were having trouble with that. Uh, the, the original concept we had was um, as we, you know, the black bottle, the matted black bottle that we first, for the mesquila, for the mesquila I thought yeah. was beautiful. And then the white bottle for the Blanco, I thought was beautiful. But then we're saying, well, what color are we going to make the Reposado? And, you know, uh, somebody that worked with us at that time said, hey, let's make it look like an agave plant. I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, it's Reposado. And it's good. Um, so when we started getting the different colors, and then we're looking at it in Yeho being gold. It started looking cheap to me, uh, you know, and it just one of them things. You know, you have a vision, and then when you start seeing it come together, you got to sometimes get off that vision and not, not let your, your ego, oh, that's what I wanted thing, uh, get in your way. So Todd Galapo from Meat and Potatoes, who designs everything I do, mm -hmm. 
um, he goes, let me play around here, you know, let's see if we can elevate it because uh, it just started looking, I thought it started looking a little cheap. But I'll tell you what's funny about that turquoise bottle in Mexico at the Cabo Wobble at the gift shop, everybody wants that bottle. Like, you know, they come in, it's got the new one sitting right there. And in Mexico, it looks like, no, we want this one. We like the way that looks. It looks very authentic, and it is. Uh, the other problem was painting the bottle. Uh, it's just becoming a, a problems every now and then. Something would get in the product, in the bottle, uh, mm. a chip, you know, or something. So we just cleaned it, the whole thing up. As you start growing, I did it with Cobble Wobble. You saw, you saw that bottle, <laughs> that horrible looking bottle. <laughs> that I, I love it. So cool it I love it. Cigar band around it. Yeah. Yeah. That that horrible looking thing, uh, hand blown into a mold. The whole nine yards. Um, that bottle. Then you guys did this one too. This one's later. Yeah, we kept changing. I, I like that one. That that was pretty much near the end, right there. Yeah, that's, that's a good looking bottle. It's it, it's authentic. It's made in Mexico. It's hand blown. It was into molds at that time. Uh, well, the other one was that one was machine blown into mold, but still blown glass. You know, in little factories. Uh, I'm still a rustic kind of guy, but when you start getting big and you start having to produce, you know, forty, fifty thousand cases a year you got to clean things up and make sure it's a little more uh, a little more easy to uh, hit the marks every time and not have flaws uh, even though I, I must admit I mean my partners uh, they think I'm crazy but I must say no I like a little flaw I like something that looks a little rustic a little handmade still because that's the way the tequila is my god if you saw the way they make the tequila it's handmade man the guys yeah. out there the humidors you know we they're chopping that stuff up and it, gets it bring it dumps the damn agave out of a truck and onto this big giant cement slab outside the ovens and got these guys are out there with axes chopping, them. chopping and things yep. up in little pieces and you got another guy over there with trimming them up real tight there's a bad piece over there look get that green off that you know and all oh, that roots looks nasty they're gonna get the root you know that shit is handmade man. it ain't going through no machines no and then they load it into the ovens by hand and then they have to take it oh, out by absolutely. hand and that stuff yeah. will burn your hands man I've, I've done it many many times and you got to wear gloves and when i at the times i went out in the fields with the guys and came back and did uh you know did the whole night i've done it 25 30 times that after that day i'm i feel like i have been beat up i have never worked so hard in my life that agave is heavy those yeah. Humidors, man, that, that work and chopping those things up and those axes, the big old thing, that thing weighs about 40 pounds, slinging that thing, hands are all blistered up, I'm aches and pains, man, and boy, that's when you sit down and drink a bottle of tequila, let me tell you, man, that's hard, that's hard work, man, and that's why it tastes good. Oh, you know, if, when you eat the agave right out of the oven, it's so good. Oh, oh I love it's it. It's like honey. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, I know, like right now, the, the, with the brand, you have the Blanco, you have the Repo, and then Yeho came out, right? And now you have a Still Strength. What other um, things are you thinking about down the road for for the brand? Well, guys, more ambitious than me, because you know, I say, uh, you know, if we want to make a, you know, an extra in Yeho, you know, forty uh, Cabo Uno was forty eight months, and that was when, my opinion, I said. I don't think this is going to get any better. I think this is it because you can go past it and over age. And then I think you get you get this other product that's, you know, it's it's really gets away from the, a real tequila. So but we probably will do an extra in Yeho, very limited at some point. Uh, like I said, we're having enough trouble keeping up with the uh, the getting the good enough agave to make what we're making right now. Uh, and so we're, we're never going to cut any corners. So, you know, I, I I'm. Uh, I'm kind of a purist. I think that's about it. You know, guy loves that 110. That 110 is cool, but it, you get high too quick. <laughs> you know, it's like, I always tell him, dude, I, I can only drink one of those shots. My lips go numb and I'm sitting there going, whew, man, I'm buzzed up, you know, and it's cool for mixing though, because you can just use a little bit less of it. And you get, um, you can put other, you know, for like a complex agave um, cocktail. It's good because you, you don't have to use so much tequila. You, just, you know, you use half as much and you get the same amount of alcohol. So it, it's good for a lot of things, but uh, Guy loves the 110. My manager, Tom Casella, he discovered the 110 uh, last month, and he's like, every day he's telling me, 
don't you love that 110? I say, I do, but you know, I like to drink a little tequila. You know, and that, with that, you got to drink very little tequila. <laughs> but it has so much flavor. That's what I like about the uh, the high proofs. The flavors just so much cooked it's agave a, it's in it. It's a agave bomb. It's an yeah. agave bomb. Yeah. That's what I love about it. So have you thought about doing any single barrel uh, things in the future too? And offering a single barrel? We did a single barrel with the Reposado. And it was a good program, actually. It was a really good program. Uh, I, I, I would like to do that again. Because uh, they were blending the single barrel. Uh, they would do, you know, had a bunch of them. And then they would blend them. And I said, no, man, just put just from that barrel and number it, you know. And, yeah. and that's when we, uh, I like that program. Because... Hey, you get you tell somebody it's going to be different. That one's going to be different than that one, and that's the way I am with my wine, with my coffee. You know, I'm a single origin kind of guy. And, yeah. Uh, so, I, I really think I think that's a really good program. I, I would definitely like to get back into that. We're trying to keep up with demand right now, uh, you know, and uh, so. Well, I, I have uh, a group. Santos really catching on on fire. You know, that little tipping point. You know that. Yeah. That added a free thing is really catching on, and I'm so happy about that. You know, everybody said, "Oh, you so you make additive free tequila." I said, "No, no, we make tequila. Tequila, tequila yeah. is additive free." Okay, let's just start right there. We make yeah. good pure tequila. I don't even like to jump on any trends, but that trend is catching on, and, and we're at the forefront of it. And um, I'm I'm impressed with that. So we're, uh, we're kind well, of you, catching you ever on, decide to on fire with guys like you, you know. That, yeah, you know, if you ever that, decide to get back in it. <laughs> into doing the single barrel program again let me know because i have a group that's called the tequila barrel and agave collective and we buy special batches special barrels at, uh, for our members and they're located throughout the entire country and they're all uh, agave fish, uh, tequila aficionados they love the good stuff no additives and we'd love to be able to offer that uh, to our members um if well, the program Dave's comes on, back dave is on this um this uh, phone call from our yes. pub publicity office he'll yeah. run this up to flagpole get it to Dan Butkus, our CEO, and uh, honestly, we might even have some of the old program somewhere in some warehouse somewhere. And we, we we should you should have that because because it, it, it's good. I have had a bottle honestly of um, it was a reposado. I had a single barrel. You know we didn't do it in Yeho, but I had a single barrel uh, that was maybe my favorite freaking reposado i'd ever had it it, it was really good it, it was about four or six months old and man it was just one you know then i've had some say, oh this is good you know but i just had one that was just like wow i want this whole you know find out this number and i was ready to track it down and try to get get it all for myself too so yeah it's, <laughs> it's uh you uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll get you involved with that see if you, we can got some from that's you. awesome i appreciate that well, thank you so much, Amy. I appreciate your time. I know you're probably uh, going to have to take off here in a little bit, but I, I really do appreciate you coming. I love it talking to other people that are are as um, passionate about tequila as I am. I know you can't see from this picture here, but this office here is filled with bottles of, of no additive tequila. I've got over close to 1,500 bottles here in this office. So um, I'm a little crazy about tequila as well. Uh, and I, it was, I just was thrilled to, to, uh, when Dave told me that, yeah, we can make this happen and, and that you could um, come in and, and do an interview with me. I, I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate guys like you. Believe me, because it's so much easier to talk to you. You know, I, I've done interviews with every freaking trade in the world on every level, rock and roll and everything else. And when you get with somebody that gets it and digs it, the interview is so much easier. I enjoy myself. Otherwise, I'd be sitting there going, how am I going to get out of this? So, hey, honey, uh, you need me in there, you know, to mop the floor or something, do some dishes? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do that on this. Well, I, I really appreciate you. I want to get into, I know you're, you're about ready to take off on a, on a new tour. Did you want to tell everybody about your new tour that's coming up? Well, it's coming up next year in July uh, 10, I think. We start in Florida, and it's with, uh, it's called the Best of All Worlds Tour with Michael Anthony, my bass player from Van Halen, my and from my band the circle jason bonham um the son of john bonham from led zeppelin and uh joe satriani on guitar uh, my guitar player vic johnson staying home for this this run and we're because we're doing a <clears throat> you know kind of like a van halen tribute we're really going to dig deep into the, my van halen years with michael anthony nobody's available to do that anymore you know after eddie's death alex doesn't seem to want to go out and and do it so we're michael anthony we call ourselves the other half 
So uh, we're going to play my legacy tour, play, you know, I Can't Drive 55, One Way to Rock, Heavy Metal, you know, my hits, and uh, a Moss Tequila, <laughs> and, and, a, and a boatload of Van Halen songs, a little bit of Montrose. And uh, we're putting together really a great tour, and it's going to be, it's, it's about 70% sold out. We've already sold out about nine of the 27 shows are already sold out the first week, and it's not till next year, but uh, I'm real excited about that, but I'm, I'm not trying to hype it. I'm just saying, come on out. It might, you know, who knows how many years I can get, keep doing that. Like I said, <laughs> when I figure I can't sing competitively with those other singers out there, you're not going to see me on stage making a fool of myself and butchering my song. So, uh, Come and see me while I can't. While you can, while I can still sing. That's all. I'm just. Yeah, that's I ain't saying it's my last tour. I'll never say that because I'll play music as long as I can. Well, I can tell you, I spent many a days up in Chico State when I went to college getting trashed. I can't drive 55. Oh, so geez, I used to play. I used to start my <laughs> tours up there because they had those little venues in Chico yeah. and Reading, and I'd play those those places and get my production all together, and then I'd go out on tour. Oh, what a trip! Yeah, that's that's. I went to. I got my degree there at Chico State, so I was I was I was a partier, <laughs> and we used to crank the "I Can't Drive 55." Then it was like that was our theme song as we were getting hammered. So that was a lot of fun. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Sammy. You got it. Have thank a great you. day. Good, good luck on your tour. Now let me figure out how to get off this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not my forte. <laughs> Well, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the interview with Sammy Hagar, the man, the myth, the legend, the red rocker himself, talking about his brand Santofino that he shares with the chef Guy Fieri. It is a very good brand. I have reviewed it before. I enjoyed the Blanco and Repo, and you can see the reviews for those in the channel below. Uh, I will be reviewing the whole entire line. They're sending it to me for a review. So look forward, look for those reviews coming up here sometime in the near future. And uh, if you like this information, enjoy the interview, make sure you click the thumbs up and give this video a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido. If you love seeing interviews like this, as well as other informational uh, videos on tequila and agave spirits, uh, as well as uh, reviews, um, make sure you click the subscribe button right there and the notification bell next to it right there. And like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So hey, if you want to pick up a bottle of Santo Fino, then you'll be in good shape. Salute. Bye, guys.